Hey everyone, Colin here. Welcome back. I hope all is well. Today I'll be tackling which sample rate is best for classical guitar and try to make it as simple as possible. So let's get into it. All right, so I think we've all been there. You open up your DAW to record and they tell you to pick a sample rate and you're really not sure what those numbers mean, but you kind of think the higher number might be better. Or maybe you're out trying to buy a new interface or maybe a new Zoom recorder and you're torn between one or the other, but you might have to spend more money to get the one with bigger numbers. Because you know your music would sound worse unless you picked the one with bigger numbers. But in reality, sample rate's nothing to worry about. And let me break this down in a practical, real world way so you guys can just set it and forget it and not have to worry about this ever again. So before I get started, let me mention a few things. In the description below, I'm gonna leave a couple videos and some articles that kind of do a deep dive into the nerdy scientific aspect of sample rate. I also won't be doing a test between different sample rates, mostly for a few reasons. The first reason is that there's already thousands of poorly designed tests on YouTube already that you can go look at if you want to. And the second is that once you understand the science behind it, it's kind of pointless. It's more or less like testing every triangle you see to make sure it still has three sides and testing every right angle to make sure it's 90 degrees. Some things are just scientific. So I'll cut right to the chase. The settings you should probably set your project to are 24 bit for the bit depth, and then the sample rate can either be 44.1 kilohertz or 44.1 or maybe 48 kilohertz. Now let me explain what those numbers mean and why those settings make sense. So basically all sample rate is, is the amount of times per second your computer samples your audio signal, your classical guitar recording, and then converts it into digital ones and zeros, which can then be converted back into an audio signal that you hear. Now there's a scientific theorem called the Nyquist theorem, which states that if you want to reproduce a frequency, your sample rate needs to be double that frequency. So if you want to capture 22 kilohertz, which is a really, really high sound, your sample rate needs to be at least 44 or double, hence the 44.1. And this explains why the industry standard for CDs has always been 16 bit 44.1. Now, once you take into account that the range of perfect human hearing, and I mean the hearing that you have the day you are born, is from 20 hertz, which is a low chest thump that you can barely hear but kind of feel, all the way up to 20 kilohertz, which is just a really high-pitched ringing, why would you ever need to sample anything above that? Well, unless you happen to be doing sound design for a Hollywood movie, the answer is pretty much marketing. A commonly used but misguided analogy is that sample rate directly translates to resolution like you would in video. So if you have a 4K video, you have more pixels, more resolution, it generally looks better or sounds better. However, audio signals don't work in the same way. You can check out those videos I linked for a very in-depth description, but basically a sine wave captured at 44.1 and a sine wave captured at 192 kilohertz has no extra information. It is the exact same audio signal, no extra detail. And in fact, recording in a higher sample rate can actually make your audio sound worse. And ironically, this is the difference that most people point to when they hear a test between 96 kilohertz or 192 and something like 44.1. So to explain this with a gross simplification is that if you record something in 96K or 192K, you're recording things that are much higher than the actual limits of human hearing. You're actually recording like bat-like echolocation ultrasonics that we can't perceive. And when your converters and your speakers try to play back these ultrasonics, it introduces two problems that are called aliasing and intermodulation distortion, which basically introduce some level of distortion that actually folds back into the audible range of human hearing. So ironically, when people point to higher sample rates as sounding more analog or more clean, they're actually hearing more distortion. And a simple fix for this is just to set your sample rate to either 44.1 or 48, and only record things that are within the range of human hearing so that way you don't get weird artifacts. And like I established before, it sounds identical under actual test conditions. And on another practical note, if you actually do an entire session at 96K or 192K, your computer CPU usage basically gets tripled or quadrupled depending on how much processing you're using, and the file sizes are huge. Now the last thing I'll mention as far as settings go is bit depth. So at the beginning I said CDs are 16-bit 44.1, 16-bit and 24-bit basically have to do with the dynamic range being recorded. And in this day and age, for the amount of computing power most people have, just set it to 24-bit and it'll be fine. If you're gonna do a CD, you'll have to you know, convert it to 16-bit, but you have more information and you're not really losing anything. And really, for the most part, most people can't hear a difference between 16-bit and 24-bit anyway. So to summarize, basically just set your projects to 24-bit and then either 44.1 or 48K, 
and forget about it. You can sleep at night, your music will sound great, and you can get back to actually making music and not have to worry about your music quality being subpar, you need to buy an expensive piece of equipment with fancy converters or, you know, 192K sample rate. It'll be fine, but that's my time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you want me to cover in future videos like this one, please leave them down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.